Hey, welcome to Talking Back Sunday. Today's Tuesday, April 13th, 2021. Welcome. All right. Hey, thanks. What episode are we on? 39, 38, 39. I stopped, I stopped numbering them because you don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it made you sad, right, Mark? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll let you know when we hit a year, when we hit number 52. Okay. I was trying so, to remember what month we started. I couldn't even remember what month. Maybe was it June? June? That sounds... I don't know. know. <laughs> yeah, what does is, what is time matter? But we're going to talk about lots of rad shit today, so that's good. That's good. Lots of it. Where do we start? I don't know. <laughs> well, I was telling you guys before, but I might as well tell everybody viewing at home that I got my second shot on Sunday. Woohoo! Johnny nice. Antibody! That's what they call me now. Yeah, they don't call you that for nothing. <laughs> Everybody's calling me that. And all the rage. Yeah. yeah. I, I changed your contact name in my phone to Johnny Antibody. Thank you. No problem. You know, in Indian, only... Indian, in Indian culture, they call like an older person in the community anti, like no matter what, like it's anti, mm-hmm. whether they're related or not. Right. So, um, <clears throat> just his cousin runs like a Muslim version of uh, the Hard Times and the Onion. Oh really? Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Some of the shit's pretty funny, and that was one of the jokes. Is uh, you know, it's okay. This woman's okay because she's already got the antibody, and it's like a picture of an old <laughs> Indian woman. <laughs> That's great. Have you, have you guys? <laughs> That's great. Have you guys been celebrating Ramadan? Today's the first day. Yeah. So we're actually we're gonna get a bunch of lights and, and make it fun for them. Awesome. Yeah, for the kids. Yeah. What, what do you? I don't even know. What do you typically do to uh, celebrate Ramadan? You don't eat. Oh. You don't eat from sun up to sundown up until uh, um, uh, uh, to the last day of it for the, for the month. And uh, and then you and then you have a big celebration. Ah. And and Ramadan like some, comes at different times of the year, right? It does. It's like two or three times a year, depending, but there's one big one every year, and oh. this is the big one. So, so this is crazy, too, because the sun's going down very late here in New York, too. So that's a long day of fasting. Dude, in Michigan, where, in Michigan, where, where you know, this is from, like, it's an hour later. Like, the wow. The sun is up, like, in the oh, summertime. Yeah. The sun will be up till 10 o'clock at night. Wow. So Dude, there's some wow, moves going around. Everybody's got uh, you know, super dry <laughs> mouths, and they're hungry as hell. And then when they find Everybody's it, just hangry. Yeah. Can and you have it, like uh, can you have like a smoothie or is that uh, out of you can't have anything no. like not, if you really do water? it not even water <laughs> like oh, kids wow. have water like children have water but uh, the people that really do it that don't lie you know because there's definitely some people in there I'm like you're lying you're <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like Huss's dad man he he does that shit for real and uh, yeah sometimes it'll be. Like, you know, six thirty in the morning, ten at night that he won't eat. Wow. Dang. Yeah. They really want me to do it and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> not I can't, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> oh man. Wow. And that's that's crazy. What a great like just like a for like a self discipline man. That that takes a that takes a strong mind. To be it able really to do does. that, it really does. Yeah, you know, like Will Chamberlain did that while he was playing basketball games. That's crazy. What? I know. I, which I don't know how. You gotta have a strong arm. Man, yeah, it seemed like you could like pass out on the basketball court. Right. Yeah, the best lightweight fighter, Habib Nurmagomedov, would not fight. Uh, he would. He wouldn't like take a fight anywhere near Ramadan because of the like the training camps are too much. He's like, no, like I can't. I have to do this. There's no way I can train this way to get ready for a fight. So he had scheduled his fights like twice a year, far away wow. from Ramadan. Yeah. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. And then Eid. Eid is the final day. That's the celebration where everybody eats all day. Nice. Like parties. Oh, man. The food on that final day must be out of sight. It is. 
it's just I'm there for so that. Good. <laughs> 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 I'm there for the big celebration oh, for sure. Man, the uh, yeah, tiki masala, as far as the eye can see. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. What else going on? I think many good stories. I saw a cool documentary last night. Go oh, yeah. on. On Hulu. It's uh the about the amazing Jonathan. Do you guys remember he was a comedian oh, yeah. magician? I've heard about this, yeah. So it's a guy named Ben Berman. Or, well, they, What's that? I haven't heard of him or or, or the or the uh, documentary, no. He would do like a lot of like mm-hmm. extreme humor. I remember seeing him when I stay, started staying up late and watching comedy shows and stuff, like uh, stand up mm-hmm. comedy shows. And he would do crazy things. Like he would have like a, a tub full of white powder and snort it all up in one shot, like it was cocaine. And uh, <laughs> he was like a wild guy. He'd like put a put a thing through his tongue, and then he'd pull it out and show. It was like, he was like a prop comic magician, and he thought he was going to die. He thought he had one year left to live in 2014. And he didn't. <laughs> and he is still around. And this documentary kind of covers him and and what he's been up to. And it's pretty amazing. And uh, he has a pretty impressive uh, crystal meth addiction, too. Oh. Yeah. Wait, he, so... He's going for like like 15 or 20 years or something, right? You know, like smoke, like a long-term crystal meth habit, right? Yeah, I think he started on cocaine and it kind of morphed. But the documentary really goes in depth and the, the documentarian kind of becomes a part of the story too. So it's really fascinating to see. And it's like, it's weird and it's lousy and it's sad, but then it kind of comes full circle at the end. It's, it's very, very bizarre, but highly entertaining. Very much did, recommended. Uh, did he think he was going to die because the doctor told him or because he just <laughs> thought that? Yeah, no, he legit, he does have some horrible heart condition, myopathy or something where like only a portion of his heart is beating and he's on a significant amount of medications. You'd think you might not do a crazy amount of uppers when diagnosed, but he he does yeah. feel like, you know, every day is on borrowed time and you kind of learn about it as it goes, but it is very interesting. Did wow, he smoke the meth? Snort it? Oh, yeah. It? Oh, yeah, he's smoking All of it. it? Smoking all of it. I guess that's how you do those crazy stunts, right? Like, 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 like when you see like Steve-O now, like Steve-O yeah. got off all the drugs and I don't, I don't know. Maybe he does still do all that shit. I don't he does know. some crazy stuff. Yeah. Steve-O is pretty, pretty wacky, totally sober. He's a pretty okay. extreme guy, I think. But um, yeah, like I, what they kind of cover in the documentary too is that the amazing Jonathan attributes all his success to his cocaine and upper behavior. So how could he kind of have it without it? Like he's been doing it for so long, they kind of both go hand in hand. Wow. Was there wow. some question about whether or not he was really actually dying or is it pretty clear cut that he was like that it wasn't some kind of a publicity stuff yeah there's there's definitely questions about it but but and it it seems like yeah like it's very interesting and he gets he gets pretty pissed when he gets questioned about it and it kind of comes out that he certainly was diagnosed with a problem and he's he doesn't know why he's still alive he's like kind of basically every day i wake up i can't believe it kind of thing like i was diagnosed and there are legit pictures of my heart and i'm prescribed all this medication and i don't know why i'm still here so that's the wow. part of it like it gets a little bit shady for a minute and then it kind of comes around but yeah really good watch has anybody seen the serpent no mm-hmm. what's, that? what's that about it's a it's a show it's like an eight eight uh episode show on on netflix about uh this couple that uh, in the 70s in in thailand uh they were kind of killing like hippies going on hippie trails and robbing them and it's pretty brutal it's pretty dark but uh it's a very very interesting show and and how these guys pulled this off and and i think i haven't gotten through it all but in the very beginning it's an interview with the guy that did it and he's living in France and, and was never convicted. Of anything. Crazy. Well, wait, wait. So 
they were hippies robbing people that were hiking or they were people robbing hippies that were hiking? They were people robbing hippies that were hiking. You know, oh. kind of running hustles and scams on, on people that they would run into, kind of like just charm them into yeah. trusting them, bringing them to their house, helping them out, and then oh. and robbing them. Really, really Jeez. crazy. That's yeah. insane. That's scary. Yeah. It is scary. Very good show, though. Really, really creepy stuff. Like when you look up, like the real people and the real people that they they uh, they did that to. It's, it's very disturbing. Yeah. Good show, though. And that's great. I feel like you only watch like the wildest documentary. <laughs> You're like, oh, well, this sounds fucked up. I'm watching this. <laughs> it, it's just, this is a show, but yes. I can't oh, really watch, sure. like, I can't watch any of that stuff anymore, really. Uh, just have, ever since I had, I should, ever since having a daughter, I can't watch those, like, scary documentary, like, the ID stuff in anymore. It's just yeah. it's impossible to watch. Yeah, back before I became a dad, I got really heavy into that show. I survived. And even even then, like it was whacking my brains. I was becoming way too paranoid all of the time, hearing these terrible stories over and over yeah. again. And I was like, I have to stop cold turkey. And I never look back at that stuff. I'm like, give me a good nature documentary. That's that's what I need. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, what are the panda bears up to? Yeah. See, conspiracy is a really good documentary. If you don't eat fish. <laughs> <laughs> But man, do, I can't. Maybe it's good yeah, I don't. Man, I can't eat fish, just because of the smell. It smells like garbage. Yeah, like I just can't do it. Like even like when like there's been times where because like Nish really likes uh, scallops, mm -hmm. and you know we haven't been going out the past year, so like but there were a couple of times she had them delivered, and I had to like go sit outside. Like I'm like I can't even be in the house right now. This is crazy. Wow. Yeah. What this thing is these jumbo shrimps from uh, you go to the Chinese place, Chinese place called JR Fusion, and each one of these shrimps is the same exact size, looks exactly the same, and they're massive. And she loves them. And I'm like, where are these shrimps from? Yeah. Are they, Either... like, are they farmed or wild caught? They, they got farmed, them. Right? They have to be farmed. They live, they're like identical. Yeah. Do you think maybe they're genetic shrimps? Yes. Yes, I do. Genetically modified shrimps? <laughs> yes. They, they've got it. It's like when you get one of those like huge apples or huge bananas and you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. That's what, it's like that, but to the shrimp. Crazy. They should call that a uh, steroid fruit. Steroid fruit? Yeah. Schwarzenegger fruit. Man, I uh, I try I I could eat seafood um, every meal if if, uh, if I had my druthers, as Les Claypool would say. <laughs> <laughs> what would he do? What would he do, John? <laughs> that was screw, screw a chimpanzee. That's right. That's that right. was a very obscure reference. <laughs> My name is Mud. You remember from Pork Soda? <laughs> <laughs> the hit record. Mid. That was a freaking hit Man, record. I, a huge yeah. record. Crazy. My my cousin Aaron loved that record, and um, because and then I remember trying really hard to <laughs> like it. And I just, it's like, oh man, I don't know how you're listening to this. this is it's insane music. And I used to love it too. Yeah. Sail the Seas of Cheese. <laughs> that, that was that the hit was record before that. Before yeah. That one had Jerry was a race car driver on it, right? Uh, and yeah, Tommy the Cat. Driver. Tommy the Cat, yeah. There's, I actually only know the Jerry was a race car driver song from Sean's impression of it. I've never actually heard the whole song. <laughs> I think there's been a couple of times like Sean and I will be talking about Primus and we try to put it on on the bus like just for fun and it gets like, no nope. immediately nope. Uh -uh. Like, we can't nope. even listen to it for like for a laugh for more than a minute that's what you call a hard sell <laughs> yeah do you remember when we, we were doing meet and greets and, and kids would come in and, and watch our uh, 
our sound checks and Sean and I would start playing My Name is Mud as they were walking in. Yeah. Yeah. No one ever got yeah, no, no one ever understood, and they just thought we were banging around incessantly and bothering everybody. Yeah, like, no, 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 it's prime. It's really cool. It's silly. <laughs> it was oh, lost, man. but we had our fun. Man, remember we used to sound check every day. Vaguely remember that. It's crazy. <laughs> Vaguely remember sound checking. Seems there's like only a couple fun. of times of tour where someone's just like, I can't. I can't do it today. Yeah. There was, there was one point on touring. I think it was a while ago. I think we got better as the years went on. There was a point where almost every tour, the last like two weeks or so, would just be like, nah, nah, no, <laughs> no. Sound. Yeah, we're not gonna sound check. One of one of my favorite ones was when we were in Manchester. This is probably 2013 or 14. It was 2014 because I had a little baby at home. And it was the middle of winter. Our bus had broken down for like the third time. Oh, we had to get in, in little vans after a very late night and drive like three hours to Manchester. We're all sleeping in a very uncomfortable dressing room at this venue. And we played one song. And we're like, we're done. <laughs> and our I, sound man at the time was not happy with us. Yeah. Wait, was that when Hudson was doing front of house? Nope. No. <laughs> Oh, uh, I there. I guess so. I I remember there were there were t- times where Hudson would be so bummed at us because we would yes. like just half-ass our way through something and then be like, "All right, we're done." And that's got to be but, so frustrating to get it like halfway or three quarters of the way there. Yeah, like you you yeah. right. Like, it, can I get three more minutes of sound to dial this in so you don't sound horrible tonight? No. Yeah, and no, yeah, yeah. In in hindsight, that was really shitty. We should send them a text saying we're sorry and we realize the error of our ways now. <laughs> well, the thing the thing that's really stupid is it it really hurts. Only hurts us. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know? yeah. the first the first three songs of the set are gonna sound shitty before he finally gets it dialed in. You know. Yeah, of no fault of his own. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But we don't know because we don't hear what it sounds like out there. It sounds fine in our ears, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, that we just kind of, ah, close enough. Too tired. Too hungover. I got to go. That tour with the buses breaking down was insane, though. Because that, that was, was that the same one where we took a train to a show? <laughs> because. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Wait, no, that, we was were that playing, a different tour. Fest, that was a festival where we took a yeah. train. Was it? Yeah, we were playing. There was that one festival. I can't remember. Oh, with town. it was Slam Dunk. World, Slam Dunk, yeah. And uh, well, like no, no, because we had other shows yeah, around it. it. Yeah, because um, yeah. So we went on, and then yeah, like we went through like three buses because they just kept breaking. Yeah, and we had that. Uh like Danish or like, I think he was, I don't know, the bus driver. Sven. Sven, he was always in a good mood, but like always telling us bad news about the bus breaking down or a tire. Yeah. Or then, we were, then we ran out of gas. <laughs> right. Yep. Oh, Where the hell man. were we? Like Sweden or something like that? Yeah, we, we might have been in Sweden. Ah! Or, or like Prague. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah. saw a lot of cool places, but man, that was a grind. And it was like the end of the year. I remember I got home. It was my son's like second Christmas, the first one he was an infant. So this was like the first real phone. And we got home on December 23rd. And like we went, I got like home, went to bed, and we went right out to the mall to take pictures with Santa Claus. Wow. Oh, that must have been exhausting. It was so I, well, that, was, that was the last tour that we were. I remember after that tour, all this talk of being like, we're never doing that shit again. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're never going home from a tour in Europe on the 23rd of December. Nope. Yeah. yeah, we need like a good two-week window to recover from that. <laughs> I, I should get depressing was... when you're away from your family. Back when it's to the house. 
Well, also, we were running around Germany, and Germany is beautiful around Christmas time. Like, there's Christmas lights everywhere. It's such a familial atmosphere. And then, like, nope, you're away from your family for four weeks in Europe. Different time zone, yeah. different everything. You can barely talk on the phone. The Christmas villages were great there, though. That yeah. Was, that was really I, fun. Dude. Yeah, dude, they know how to do that right over there, man. Yeah. They, they celebrate Christmas better than any other culture or country, whatever it is. Yeah. That's right. That's Do you remember the, the big slides? The big slides that me and me. That's exactly what I was just yeah. thinking about. The slides of Berlin. Well, they were like like man made little uh, sledding hills. They kind of had snow on them, and you got a tube, right? And you go down on a tube. Do you remember that, which was very funny? It was funny to me then. And when I told people the story after, but they let you and Nate go down at the same time mm -hmm. when I was up there, but they held back. They said, no, 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 you stay. <laughs> and you guys were just down the slide waiting, and they just weren't letting me go. And I was like, oh, can I go now? And the guys, no, not yet. <laughs> these, guys, these guys were fucking huge. They were huge <laughs> mammoth men. And then finally, I like a minute goes by, and I'm like, "Can I go now?" And the guy goes, "Yup." He goes, kicks me on my back down the slide. <laughs> ho ho ho! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear to God, immediately I had that, but it was a real kick. <laughs> Do you remember when I got down there? You and Nate were like, "What took you so long?" I was like, "Yo, they didn't let me down," and then they kicked me. <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't like the they didn't like the cut of your jib. No, they yeah, didn't. Man. I don't like this they, guy. They did not like me. <laughs> Man, I was so bummed I wasn't there because um, I, th this is not a great story, but it is a story nonetheless. But I almost ripped the coffee shop off because I didn't have any euros to pay. I thought they took cards and then they're like, well, there's an ATM around the corner. The, the ATM around the corner would not accept my card. And this oh. is before I had GPS on my phone or anything. My phone wouldn't work over there except for phone calls. So I cruised around Berlin in the freezing cold for like two hours before I found an ATM that would work. And I ran back there and gave him like 20 euros for a two euro cup of coffee. I'm like, I am so sorry. <laughs> I am not a coffee thief. <laughs> I told him I'd be back in five minutes, two hours later. I'm like, I'm so happy you're still open. I'm so embarrassed. Yo, that day off that we went, in that day that you're talking about, like that, that it was like six degrees that day, or something yeah. like that. It was mm -hmm. freezing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so cold. Fun day though. Yeah, those Christmas villages were the only thing keeping me going. The, the sausage thing. and the mulled wine. <laughs> yeah, just living off of sausage and mulled wine <laughs> <laughs> to soothe your depression and homesickness. <laughs> yep. It worked though. Every time I went to one, I was I was happy to be there. That old one was good. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, we made some this Christmas for the first time. And woof, it's tremendous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes right to the head. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Still, I don't I don't know if I want to get. I don't, I don't know what's the the furthest away from Christmas we could go to Germany and and still get the Christmas villages. That's what I would look into. If they start at the beginning of December, maybe. maybe. Yeah, it's just tricky because we've been doing the Starland thing. So if we get back to that, oh right, right. when real life happens, it might be might be kind of tricky. But who knows? It may never happen again. But I don't know. We might get huge in Germany, and they're like, "Hey, first class flights for everyone. Mm -hmm. Your family can come, come <laughs> hang out. You know, yeah. it's bound to happen." I'm well, putting yeah, it out there in the universe. Every time we go back to Germany, it gets better and better. It does, and I mm -hmm. I love it. What a beautiful country, beautiful people, yeah. great beer, great food. I do like yeah. going when it's warm there. That is nice. Yeah. It definitely not going to air conditioning, so that's for sure. No. Well, the, the buildings are so old that they can't just install HVAC easily. But then it's also cold in the winter, too. I, I, <laughs> I sometimes, like the UK and Europe, I feel like they just don't value heating and air conditioning as highly as Americans. Yeah. Or we're giant not wimps. Spoiled. Yeah, yeah, not. Like, yeah, like they're not spoiled little bitches like we are here in America. <laughs> Soft Americans. Yeah, need ice for your water. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Man, 
ice, the whole ice debacle. Man, on that on that slam dunk fest, we played in Birmingham, I think, and we asked for ice, and a big bucket showed up. The one where yeah, where the uh, where we, we had to take like, the train around. Yeah, that was amazing. They were like, "What? This is all of the ice in England. It's all right here, <laughs> and we have it. <laughs> yeah, and it's ours. Let's throw it at each other." <laughs> We have we have asked for ice backstage in in Europe and England, like you know, for for everybody, some ice. And I can remember getting like like two solo cups full of ice. They like set set on the table for you. That's, <laughs> that's in like, Rio de Janeiro. Oh, that's right. Rio that was. Janeiro. You're absolutely right. That Little was. two styrofoam cups about <laughs> that big. They're like, <laughs> here's your ice. <laughs> okay, that's not what we want, man. <laughs> Dude, I think after well, after one of those tours where we were like, the, no icing was happening, we played one of those one-offs in Texas or Ohio, and we asked for ice, and literally it was the biggest cooler ever filled with ice. And we are like, that's, 500 how gallon <laughs> that's yeah. how you do ice. Texas that's size what, ice. That's what daddy's talking about. <laughs> that's funny. It's kind of not funny when you're there because when and you want ice, <laughs> but yeah, when they yeah, like to... not funny then, funny later kind of situations. Yeah, yeah funny after a year in quarantine. <laughs> or it's and it's oh, like God, uh, it's like eighty degrees outside, but somehow the dressing room is like ninety eight degrees, and then the beer has been in the refrigerator for six hours but it's lukewarm still somehow <laughs> yeah yeah this i guess uh yeah i don't know if we're just babies or what it is i think it may be a little bit of both <clears throat> yeah and then touring and the inconvenience of it all makes you a bigger baby from having to deal with it from the second you wake up to the second you go to bed <laughs> While you're sleeping too, like bumping around on the bus, getting woken up, you know, bus stops a little short. Oh my God, is this it? <laughs> there was a um, there was a, a driver that we had on Europe tour. I can't remember who it was, but I remember Andy. Like one night after the show, we were, we were going somewhere, and we kept on saying to Andy, like, "Hey, just could you tell the driver, like, whatever, like next stop, like next stop that we go that, that there's a restaurant. Could you just have him stop?" And he just wasn't stopping because there was none. And after like the third time, Andy was like, hey man, just whatever you see, just stop. And then he, we, we all heard him yelling at Andy like, this isn't America, man. <laughs> you know? There's not a McDonald's on every corner. Like, it, nothing's open. Yeah. And United all States like, is the land of convenience. Land of convenience, yep. That just reminded me uh, too of uh, on a slightly separate note of uh, one time in England, we knew we were going to be, the bus was going to be driving by Stonehenge and it was going to uh, go by yeah. like, like three or four in the morning. And we, and <coughs> some of us were already like up late. We're like, well, let's just stay up a little while and we'll pull over and go check out Stonehenge. And then we did. And Stonehenge was closed. And uh, they had to close Stonehenge. No, it closed. I thought it was just like, out there in a field and you could go up and look at it apparently not and there was like one security guard at like 4 30 in the morning just sitting outside stonehenge making sure nobody messed with it don't look at the rocks <laughs> right don't you remember I, I i woke up and i was like hey what are you guys doing up and like stonehenge i was like all right cool I'll stay up and i remember it being closed and then we figured out like why there would be security there and it was because somebody would definitely graffiti on it, like Debbie and yeah. Debbie and Johnny love each other, you know, like spray it on the stuff. Was like, here. Yeah, Debbie and Johnny were here. Yeah, you the can't trust heart. people. You can't trust people not to mess with Stonehenge. It's not possible. And that's why we can't have nice things. Exactly. Exactly. You and Nate stayed up. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 We thought we would just pull over to the side of the road and walk over and just look at Stonehenge for a minute. Have a quick glance, take a selfie, be on your way. Yeah. But no. <laughs> it 
it would have been pretty amazing too. The sun was like just starting to come up, like if the sky was was red, it would have been amazing to go check it out at that time. But no, it was closed. Anyway. Any other good Europe UK stuff? Oh man. Yeah. I'm trying to think. God, it seems like so long since we've been there. Yeah. That's because, because it has that, been. So long since we've been anywhere. So I left my house. Well, I guess, yeah, even with touring, I don't, we, I guess we did the, the UK and Europe towards the beginning of that whole world tour, right? Yeah. The last six months of that tour was mostly America. So it has been a while. Yeah, two years at this point. Damn. Really? Ripes. That's crazy. It didn't have to be like this, I didn't think. Maybe it still would have been like this. And who fucking knows? Who knows? You see something? There's dolphins jumping out of the water. Nice. Wow. The coolest. Yeah. Are they near the? Uh, are they close to the shore? Or are they out there? It looks close from here. I'm probably gonna say 200 yards out, though. Nice. Yeah, it's not so far. That's cool. Man, there. You just said the word, uh, or like the you used the unit of measurement of yards, and I was, I was thinking about, um, I was playing that, like I accidentally figured out um, the, you know that song the the waiting by Tom Petty, mm -hmm. and uh, and I, but in the chorus, I I guess I just never really thought of it, but I was singing it, and I and he says every day you get one more yard and i'm like who says that <laughs> like, it's it's just such a funny funny like uh yeah. stretch of a rhyme you know is it's it because just, of it's because of kind of rhymes with part right part yeah like because the waiting is the hardest part every day you get one more yard but then being where 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 it where it is it makes me think he probably spent a lot of time looking for that <laughs> one word and he settled on yard. I'm glad he didn't use shart. Yeah, too. Yeah, shart. Every day you. That's a pretty hard part <laughs> of life. <laughs> but. Uh, um, wow, well, I guess I never I, even realized that that's what he said in the song. Yeah. I, I never even thought about it. In my Meter mind, wouldn't work. In, uh, in, or inch or well any other term of measurement really mm -hmm. in my mind he's like going in and like uh mike campbell and like jeff lynn like they're in the control room you know mm -hmm. they're tweaking some sounds and he's like guys i think i got it what do you think about one more ready yard and they're and they're like yeah that's it done get in that booth go record that mm -hmm. right now tom petty I just think that's really funny. That probably is that, too. That's in my mind, that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> Jeff Lynn sitting there with his beard and dark tinted glasses and curly hair. Jeff Lynn always kind of scared me a little bit with that with that book, his big afro and his tinted glasses. I never you know, it's like a baseball coach that's, that has a mustache. That's really scary looking. Yeah. Kind of same kind of deal. Well, because like, his beard was like really well groomed, like, like you could tell he like made sure it was always tight. He spent a lot of time cultivating a very odd look. Yeah, that was just a wild time, though. You know, because the eighties, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of cocaine everywhere, so people were doing all kinds of wacky stuff, and everybody thought it was cool because they're all yipped up. Yeah. You do you, man. Looks great. Mm. Hey, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> I think that uh, the album that don't come around here anymore. No I think that that album was probably not good because of cocaine usage on every part. 
Wait, is that into the great wide open? No, it was one no. before. Uh, it was one before uh, uh, full moon fever. Huh. And then, well, full moon fever was a Tom Petty solo record, right? It wasn't the Heartbreakers. Yeah. Is that right? right? Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. Yeah, his first one. And then Wild no, was the next one. What's the difference? I mean, there's a little bit of a difference, but. Yeah, there's, well, I noticed there's like, there's less, um, like the, like the songs are a bit more straight, straightforward when it's like on those two solo records. Yeah. Like there's not a lot, uh, not as much like, uh, flashy stuff happen do you think that has something to do with jeff lynn well there's like from that documentary like they're like their old drummer stan was saying that um he didn't like the way that jeff lynn recorded because he would record like each individual drum like all separate and then piece them together oh here wait it's real important that this guy let everybody in the neighborhood know that what he listening? likes loud yeah so but but they um but he uh yeah so which is crazy to think about because that's like like they were doing everything to tape so he must have spent so much time cutting all that together but um but like yeah and then so he didn't like recording that way because he liked recording you know like tracking the band live like uh What's his name would do? Um, Jimmy Ivy. Mm -hmm. And so, then, wait, so, are you saying like literally, like he'd have the drummer sit there and like just play the kick drum, the whole song yes. on the kick drum, and then just play the snare, the whole? Wow. Yeah, it sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it sounds it's crazy. Pretty, yeah, you know, I, I did that once with Eric for one yeah. song. I can't remember what song it was. It, it was on. It was on her self titled. But the way that you do that is just air drum the rest of the drum set mm -hmm. that, that you're not playing to make yeah. it sound real. That's how you yeah. got to do that. Or put a pad air. over it and not mic it. Whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, and I guess you would get like a super clean, clear drum sound like that. Like Yeah. Well, like especially back in the 80s when you couldn't like hit replace stuff and you know. Yeah exactly and and then well like and then if you wanted to add anything like a like a delay or like a reverb like it could be really specific uh, and you'd have like full control over it right because it's only that one thing but me and like i like i like think like recording like the symbols separate from the kit i i can under i can understand but like just doing each individual thing is yeah like that's crazy but he was just i guess he was real particular about what he liked and, and a lot of people like those that records yeah. yeah well they're amazing because they're yeah. so good he also brought that that roy orbison record that he did man, he, he really brought roy orbison back I, I mean um uh what was the hit song uh you got uh, it uh, oh yeah anything at all you got, you got it. it. What a I don't great, think, great song. Yeah. That that um was that before or after the traveling Wilburys when that record I think came it was out? like I think it was like right right before like around the same time period. Like and that's how he got into the traveling Wilburys, I think. And Jeff Lynn was like, Hey, you wanna want me to ask Roy? I think I think that's how it well, yeah. one of them, it might have been him or did he also do something with George? He was working with one of the guys from the Traveling Wilburys and the other guys ended up at the studio. And I don't know if it was Roy Orbison or George Harrison, but he was like doing a session, I think, with just one of the guys for an album. And they all ended up hanging out together at the studio, I think, the first time that, that it all that it came up. Um, I remember right. Yeah, I'll have to go back and watch that documentary. Yeah, I got that from our buddies over Craft Recordings. Yeah. Yeah. There's um 
well because that going back to that roy orbison song like that hit like that always made me like that makes me think of george harrison like i like, yeah like i just feel like that like that feels like something he might have had a hand in and it sounded like 80s george harrison too like all the sounds on it yeah isn't that Jeff Lynn though? Wasn't all that Probably. all Jeff Lynn? Yeah, I think yeah. George Harrison. Yeah, too. Like, like, uh, got my mind set on you, George Harrison. Oh my God, I think dude. that was Jeff Lynn as well, right? Yeah, yeah, dude. That song, that is such a good song. Man, Jeff Lynn gave a lot of people a lot of hits at that time. Mm-hmm. A lot yeah, of older dude. dudes too. Those probably, those dudes are probably in their fifties at that time, right? It's crazy. Roy Orbison, I thought was like ninety three when all that was happening. He was like <laughs> fifty five. Wow. <laughs> he looked like he was ninety three. <laughs> he did. Dude, even if you see a picture of Roy Orbison when he's like just starting out, like he's fifteen, you like this teenage heartthrob, and he looks like he's ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He looked like an old man his whole life fascinating character he's always so lonesome <laughs> very well yeah never excited about being lonely <laughs> except when he does that very <laughs> sexy very sexy he started doing that sound he wasn't lonely anymore uh-uh. <laughs> until he stopped then he was lonely there's like I'm going so out of my fucking mind that I imagine like the first couple round of demos that we do, there's going to be a lot of wacky stuff like that. Just, <laughs> I'm so I, in, to, in for that. <laughs> if you guys need me to do a track like my that. System. Oh. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> wow. My, wow, that's it. Yeah, that's better than mine. That's my Roy Everson. Mark, go get in the booth. We got to lay that down. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like Chewbacca. <laughs> it's kind of a, a we got a Wookiee. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's a, a mashup. It's a mashup yeah. right <laughs> Man. And we'll put put some reverb and delay on that. Oh my god. It's it so it sound huge. <laughs> and then I think <laughs> after that you gotta gotta follow it up with a vibra stel- a vibra slap. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe this is the record if we finally use a vibra slap. Man. What a silly instrument. <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh, every time I end, I hear it on a, on a song, it's like, wow, you guys really did it, huh? <laughs> yeah. That band yeah. Cape used it all the time. It's so weird. They use it and so much. Long you, you, forget, you forget about it after a little while. <laughs> After Man. the third song, you hear a vibra slap, and you're like, "Oh yeah, that's just the vibra slap." <laughs> and there, I never um, like I. When I was younger, I didn't like. I knew like the cake hits, but man, they're pretty awesome. I yeah, mean, they just saying, some... like their whole thing, it's pretty awesome. They have some good songs, and they're one of those bands that like nobody else sounds like them. Which you can't really say about me. Yeah. Like, you know a cake song when you hear it because nobody else sounds like that. It's crazy. It's like super 90s, too. Like, I think you can hear that and be like, oh, yeah, this came out in the 90s. It had to it. Yeah. Like, when, like when you hear Four Non Blondes, you immediately <laughs> know it came out in the 90s. Not because you were there, but because it just sounds like it. Well, I yeah. guess that's the same with the 70s and 80s, too. But like I feel like the mid '90s, especially maybe into the late '90s, was big for like like kind of like quirky, quirky bands or you know like someone could have a big hit with just like I mean like it's like Primus even you know like you could just be yeah. a weird band with a weird sound and like break through and be huge. I mean REM yeah. was pretty quirky too. Yeah, who was bigger than them at their time? True, yeah. they have, like they have some really big hits. I didn't. So like Seamus is is a huge REM fan and he's been educating me on him because like I didn't know because I feel like I was like a little too young to yeah. know to to grasp this the like what all that they like REM had done because when I thought of REM like I was like I think of that record uh, Monster mm-hmm. and then but like that was super late in their yeah. in their career 
and and then so and yeah like so Seamus has been or like he's had me like turn me on to a lot of their earlier stuff and it's so rad like it kind of sounds like they like sound like uh southern smiths mm -hmm. but it was happening at the same time as the smiths so it's not like they were ripping each other off like they, yeah they're inspired they so by the separated. same thing yeah it's crazy and i didn't even realize that but also uh peter buck did that uh uncle tuplo record oh no kidding oh, really? i don't know that yeah but yeah. he produced it yeah yeah, uh, Jeff Tui talks about it in his in his book. I gotta get and that. I book. didn't know that either. It's good. But. Yeah, I, I was just saying. I don't know why. Like, like getting back to like Asa, G Jimmy Iovine producing mm -hmm. an album of yours. How? We're losing you. I couldn't hear that. Yeah. Yeah, you just got very oh, soft. Yeah, I didn't hear. Sorry, Jimmy. I was talking about how cool it would be to have Jimmy Ivy um, produce one of your records. Yeah. Does he do? He doesn't produce more. I don't, think so. I don't think so. I think he has way he too much money to be in a studio anymore. Yeah. He 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 uh he's he has that headphone money. Yeah. Dude, Him and, and Dre. And you know. You know who's in, who's part of that is uh, that dude that tried to sign us at, at uh, was it DreamWorks? Remember the guy Luke Wood? Luke Wood. Luke Wood. Yeah. Luke Wood. He's like, yeah. dude, it's Jimmy Iovine, Dr. Dre, and then Luke Wood is like third on that list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. He he. Uh, there were um, he he can he said that Straylight was the talent from Taking Back Sunday. <laughs> He Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he it's like, wow. He, Thanks, Luke Wood. <laughs> he but, said that but, to you? Uh, he said it to somebody else. Secondhand. No, we, yeah, I heard it secondhand. Mm -hmm. But he, uh, um, there's actually an interaction with him that I still feel really bad about all these years later. But he, so he, we were on tour with Jimmy World and which I'd love, I want to do again. But they, so we're on tour with Jimmy World and he and Luke Wood was at the LA show. And this was after uh, like we had, or like we had just signed with Warner. And then, uh, and I had like just found out that he had like said that about our band. And then, so, uh, and then like we passed each other in the hallway because he was Jimmy World's guy on DreamWorks. And then he, uh, and then he's like, oh, Adam from Taking Back Sunday. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm one of the untalented ones. And then I walked off. And then I just felt, I, I, I still feel really bad about that. But that was my last interaction with him. Do you think I also, you, knew you were talking about? He knew exactly what I was talking about. Yes. Yeah. There, there's, but, um, but it was just a shitty, a shitty thing for me to do. I shouldn't have done it. But hindsight's always 2020. I was a dumb kid. But I, do remember and this is really sad we were we were out with him at a uh some restaurant in los angeles it's when we were talking to labels when he got the news that elliot smith died Oof. and because he was uh, he um, was on dreamworks right elliot smith he, yeah luke was elliot smith's guy and that was that. a that was a rough that was rough. I don't remember the, him getting the news about that, but I remember Ellie Smith being his dude. Yeah. Man, that, that was an exciting time, like when DreamWorks was interested in signing us because they were they were the shit for a little while. Yeah, like, it was amazing. They were just yeah. putting out great album after great album after great album for that period. Man, I I remember was AFI was blowing up, and oh yeah, Straylight was in a meeting with Luke. And he had to run out of the meeting because AFI was shooting that video that came out. They shot in Prague. Really, really cool looking video. But the director had like dropped out the day before shooting. And the whole band is in Prague ready to go. And he had to coordinate another director like oh. in that moment. Oh, wow. 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 Yeah. From 
another country. That's yeah, insane. yeah, yeah. He's he's in Los Angeles, so Czech Republic on way different time zone. And he's like, oh my God, I have to handle this. That's crazy. I wonder what happened to the director. Like what it made him do that. That that screams just uh that screams addiction to me. Something's wrong. Something went very wrong with him. Because Who knows? maybe he didn't get his supply. Yeah, Not I like mean I, they, you know. It worked out. They got a great video out of it. I forget what that song was, but I remember seeing it like, oh, that's the one. Yeah. That yo, that album is so good. Yeah. What's it called? Sing the Sorrow. Sing the Sorrow. Great album. You know, it's funny. I rem- it just came back to me. Um, I went to see AFI. I don't know. We must have. I must have like stayed after a tour. It was like when when I don't know what Taking Back Sunday was doing, but AFI was starting to blow up, and I think I went with Jillian to see AFI at House of Blues in Anaheim. Um, and whatever point we're at, I remember being there and being like, oh my God, like if we could make it to this level, that would be like the most amazing thing ever. Like I just, like whatever point we were at, like playing House of Blues was still like. Yeah, because we were, we were like, doing like, that was probably around when we were doing like the up. Troubadour. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I just remember it feeling, at that point to me, it felt like the same as going to like Madison Square Garden now and being like, oh my God, imagine playing Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And it was probably like six, less than six months later or something that we were doing it. Yeah, that was that was a crazy run, man. Yeah. I remember playing the Troubadour first time, you know, first time there and, and thinking, um, Elton John played here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Axel probably used the shower. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one where Adam started the show by reading a, a bad review that someone wrote about the band, I think. Yeah, yeah, oh, they yeah. compared us to bad archers of loaf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were, um, well, because we didn't even, because it was in like that weekly, like, inter, like entertainment magazine newspaper thing that was in all the venues and then we were like we had set up merch and we were just waiting for the show and i and i read it and i just it it, it was just a scathing review (laughs) and talking about how fucking awful we were and then so right when we got on stage i walked up (laughs) and i read the description that they wrote of our of, of, of our first record and then we played the show that was pretty funny. That was yeah, pretty, I like that. Kids flipped out at that show. I remember. Yeah. yeah. There's. That's when we met uh, Larry and Terry, and because Jillian was supposed to be there, but but she couldn't because hmm. um, they're like Midtown was doing something. Something was going on. Is that when uh, when they they tried to they they impressed us by getting us passes to Universal Studios? yeah yeah same <laughs> trip oh no i actually i don't know if that's the same was trip. that a different one that was really fun though i remember that yeah well because their offices were like right there we got to skip the lines and everything yeah dude, it felt so cool yeah big time felt like real movers made and shakers for the first time <laughs> made it to the big time i really did feel like that yeah, yeah. We're set. We're good. We made it. We made it. That's it. We're in California at Universal Studios. Hit it big time. Yep. And they're letting us cut the line. Troubadour is like 30% sold out. <laughs> Crushing it. Yeah. You know, that's a, a kind of a funny thing about when uh, Tell All Your Friends came out that it gets forgotten, but I, I remember that for the most part, the the reviews that we got were mediocre to bad for that. Record. Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, there, it wasn't. Yeah, and then like years after years went by, there's sort of these revisionist reviews of the album and how amazing it is. Yo, that happened so many times. Like people can go back and go, no, 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 no. What we meant to say yeah. is it was a good album. Yeah. 
They're, yeah, dude. They're, yeah. But yeah, there was a website yeah. I used to go to that the review, the, the wording of it wasn't bad. You know, it was like mediocre to decent, but the star rating was like two stars or something. And then over time, that star rating became four. Like, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's a. Uh... That is interesting. I think interesting is the exact word for that. <laughs> interesting. There... Yeah. It's a. That stuff's always a funny thing. <laughs> Just how. Too. And that totally, totally explains why we like at that time just why i know we couldn't find anyone to put our record out yeah. <laughs> yeah. triple crown was gonna pity sign us <laughs> they were but they didn't they didn't even do that well because we got the victory offer oh is that is that right i didn't know the timing of that exactly i thought they were kind of just like yeah i yeah i yeah. think, we, I think yeah. we chose victory if i remember right i don't think so no, I I, I, I I don't remember it that way at all. I remember every everyone, majors to the to the smallest labels in the world, biggest to smallest, everyone saying no except Victory. That's how I recall. Yeah. Victory came Not in even. hot. Victory came in very hot and strong. And right, hey, you can be in the studio next week. And Triple Crown came around and was like, well, here maybe we could kind of maybe. Here's- and it was I like, yo, you Fred really don't want course. us. This guy wants yeah. us. You don't. We're going with the person that wants us. Dude, and Joe Crown gave us a strong meh. <laughs> yeah. Meh. Very strong. Meh. The first of many mehs of our career. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Dave Stein was like, yo, don't sign this contract. And we're and we're, 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 we're like, we don't care. Yeah. We, were <laughs> we like, got nothing no. to lose. Everything to gain. We're signing the contract. <laughs> no one else will sign us. We're done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember. I will never forget because we kept asking him to go back and try to make the deal better. And uh, and he and eventually, I remember very distinctly him coming to us and said, look, you can polish a turd all you want, but it's still a turd. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, we want that turd. The contract, yeah. the contract oh, yeah. we were about to sign. <laughs> He called it a turd. Like Anchorman, yep. I'll eat the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which it was. But man, it was a turd. It was a turd. It was a golden turd. turd. That one, yeah, it was a golden turd. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and who knows? If we didn't, I don't know, if we didn't sign with them, who knows? Things might not have played out the way they did. Man, on the 20th anniversary of I don't Tell Your Friends, I think we should buy, buy ourselves golden turds. <laughs> I bet the mantle. we could find somebody to make that for sure. I don't know if I want to go with it. Wow. Like put it on yeah. a trophy. That would be funny. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yo, it would be very fun. <laughs> like like it like a bowling trophy, but you just take the bowling guy off and put yeah. like a little gold. A log. Poop. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking like a swirly, like a swirly. poop. I like that. There's, yeah. Well, like that's next year, isn't it? Yeah. What? What is? Twenty years for tell your friends. Oh. Next March. Yep. It's only a matter of time before people start asking us to do a tell all your friends tour. Oh, it's already happened. (laughs) Just did that. Yeah, we've we've had enough anniversaries. We're gonna come with some hot fire on the next record. Not Can't yeah. have too many anniversary tours because then it gets cheap. No, we're, we're done for the time being. Say third. Uh, third. Of the and game. and then like think guys like twenty years from well well no like nineteen years from now we'll be having the twenty year anniversary of Talking Back Sunday the youtube podcast right that's what everyone wants yeah they do. Yeah. gotta you gotta give the people what they want <laughs> more inane ramblings <laughs> we can uh we can redo our first episode in 20 years we'll, we'll recreate the same discussion <laughs> mickey asked me if i was going to be taken back someday until i i died 
I hope so. I hope so. That's that's Man. the goal. Agreed. Me too. Was he wanting you to pursue other things, or did he? No, no. It was just a legit question. Like, are you going to yeah. be in curious until you die? Yeah. Like, well, I hope so. Yeah. 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 Because you know that's the plan. Like, I think it's just all really starting to like sink into me. Like, dad's a man, drum, a rock drummer in a rock band. And, mm -hmm. That's what he does for a living. Like he didn't. It just he just couldn't wrap his head around it until recently. So now he started having like a lot of questions about it. Oh, that's cute. Man, there was a period in time to where Keaton thought I worked at the airport because he was- <laughs> That's the saddest like, thing. Yeah, like like he thought, because it was all, always like, oh, well, dad's got to go to work. And then they dropped me off at the airport. So in his mind, I was working at the airport, but I had to sleep there too. Could you imagine six hellacious weeks of working at the airport? <laughs> but Sleeping in a leave. cot? <laughs> yeah. Half an hour from your house? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, that you know, works it, hard. It, it, it is a legit, it, that is a legit thing, like for a little kid to think. You know? Bring yeah. your dad to the airport and he's going to work. So obviously, this so is he's working. Yeah. So. All right, I think that's a good place to end it. Taking back Sunday yep. till we die. Oh, but, uh, new shirt. <laughs> hey yo, I'm into it. But anyway, we'll see you guys next week. All bye. right, bye bye. Bye bye.